Good morning. Just clicking a few buttons, ready to go live. How are you? Good morning, good morning. Is it working? Are we live? Are we alive? Yes, we are. Have we got a pulse? We sure do. On the pulse of morning, in fact. Right, come on in. We're going to have a really good day today. It's a hummingbird day. Um, looking forward to that. I really am. I've been practicing. Have you been practicing? I've seen some of your artwork on Clarity Worldwide. Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, good morning. Come on in. It's always good. I can't actually see anything. I just see some life. <laughs> Steve Ellen's in the building with you today, so if you have any questions, it, direct them at Steve. He knows the answers, I'm sure. And, uh, and welcome to the Shack Shack. Come on in, grab a seat. It's a little bit overcast. Did you have a storm yesterday? It was raining steroids yesterday. We really got, we really got a shower. Boof. All over the southeast of England, actually, I think. But today it's just overcast. But we like that. We don't mind it. The farmers love it. In a week they'll be moaning, though. It'll be too rainy. Just can't get it right in England, can we? <laughs> so come on in. Steve, do me a favour and let me know that the sound is OK. I'm here. Sound is OK. Look, he knows now. <laughs> Good. Glad to hear it, Steve. Um, yeah, we're really busy at, at Clarity today because, well, it would have been our open days. Can you believe today would have been the setup for our big open day event, which is like the, the event of the year in the Clarity calendar, you know, where hundreds of people all converge on, well, it was Ditton, wasn't it, last year? Beautiful venue. And uh, unfortunately, you know, with COVID and with the lockdown and with the social distancing and all that jazz, we've, we've had to, um, we had to cancel it this year, actually. So um, that's a real shame because it's because we are primarily an online business. That's one of the big opportunities to get together with our community, you know. So it's a shame that it didn't it didn't pan out this year. But you know what? Health and safety and all that. There was no way that we would ever uh, risk. Why would you? You know. So, so Steve and the team, they're busy at work just building a little online celebration, a little party, uh, open day sale. So, um, yeah, that will start tomorrow and uh, and it will centre around my blog as well. So, um, so yeah. It's going to be fun this weekend. We'll see what we can come up with. But there'll certainly be lots of great bargains and projects and all that jazz. So we aim to please. We aim to keep you company. And, uh, yeah, I'm very sad about the open days. It's got nothing to do with the money. It's to do with the, the, the community getting together. It's always brilliant. And Ruth and her sister's cakes for a start. Do you know what I mean? But there you go. Next year, we will be there. We will be there, and I hope you will too. So come on in, and don't forget to look out for the weekend's events on uh, online. We'll do what we can. Right, early to the party, one minute to. Did you do any homework? Did you get the first... Oh, I've been going, I'm really enjoying this. And do you know what I really like? Even though, I mean, hang on, we're looking, it's not 10 o'clock yet, is it? We're looking at Dee's work and we're taking Dee Paramore's beautiful artwork as inspiration, aren't we? And this is going to be one of the prizes over the open days. Oh, yes. Um, for sure. Dee said I could give it away and so I shall. And it's 10 o'clock. And good morning. Come on in. Grab a seat. Welcome to the Shack Shack. Safe, happy and creative. Stay home and craft. <laughs> I was laughing yesterday with Jane Telford because she listened on Radio 2 and apparently they've got something going on which is um, 
stay home and get groovy because obviously it's a, a music channel isn't it stay home and get groovy and I said Do you know what Jane because we have that free groovy download don't we every every Friday and because we got the shack shack we actually thought you know we could have a stay home and get groovy on a Friday and then I thought the acronym's not really going to go so well, is it? We might get a lot more hits and a lot more viewers, but I don't think they'd be expecting groovy plates. <laughs> let's shag together or uh, shag, you know, it, let's all meet at the shag shag, the shag shack. <laughs> can you imagine? Yes, I can. And all these people would be converging on the Shag Shack thinking that they're in for a real party and there'd be us sitting there with our, with our, with our styluses all at the ready. <laughs> so that's why we just call it a groovy download. Did you download? That'll do. <laughs> and Radio 2 has no idea <laughs> what we're thinking. So... The thing is, that when we look at the, are you all ready? Are you ready to rock and roll? We look at Dee's beautiful work. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and what we did yesterday was we started on this particular bird, didn't we? And, and then today I thought we'd have a go at this one because we sort of ran out of time on the, on the beautiful wing. So I thought this time we could concentrate on the great big wing that's available. So we won't start again with the front and the head because we've done that. So I thought today we'd start on the big wing. Are you up for that? So you can see. See, I really like this sort of partial colouring. You know, I, I like it when you do bits. Doesn't that look nice? you know, rather than completely filled. See, I, I was actually really liking that area there. I think it looks nice with a little flash of black, a little flash of grey. And when you add a little bit of grey or black work around the coloured images, doesn't it make it pop? Hey? Eh? And so, so I thought today, because I said yesterday, didn't I? One for test and one for best. So this is the one where I test the colours and make sure that it works and that this is what I want and this is the one that I go, I go to best. So this is where we're headed today and the colours, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with, with Dee's idea, but you can pick any colours you like, you know that. We're in the shack shack, safe, happy and creative, okay? I can't get the, fr the Friday shack out of my head now. <laughs> naughty, naughty. Right, come on, smut. This is where we were. This is where we're going. And we're going to... So I looked in the polychromos and I found uh, three colours again, which work really well, I think. And I went with light, medium and dark, you know, because that's really the kind of trick, isn't it? If you, if you look at what we've done, it's light, then halfway, all light, halfway down, medium and then right in on the lines dark so light medium dark again here you see if you look at you look at um these it looks even better light medium dark that right? light medium dark light medium dark okay so i think we've got the picture so you've got to pick three colors and i've picked just so that you know steve make a mental note i've picked um, let's have a look. I've picked 140. Not that you need to pick these ones, but I know a lot of you like to know. 120 and 141. So that is Delft Blue. I don't think that looks like Delft Blue at all. Uh, ultramarine and light ultramarine. There you go. Okay, so those are the three that I've picked to do this particular bird. Hummingbirds. Cool, that was a lovely session yesterday all about hummingbirds, wasn't it? Okie dokie. So, are you ready to rock and roll? Shall we have a go? Are you ready to try? It's Thursday already. Thursday already. So I thought today we'll do the, the wing of the hummingbird and then maybe this, this, this evening or today, if you feel inclined, you could do the other hummingbird, 
you know, there's a couple of them still in there. That's easy. We know how to do the beaks because we did the beaks yesterday, didn't we? We did the beaks. We did the heads. So the bits that are still exposed, that was yesterday's hour. And so today we'll do the wing, the big, beautiful wing. We're going to use the light colour first. Should we get started? Are you up for it? How are you anyway? Are you all right? Are you all right? Are you? Funny old world at the moment. I know, but you're not alone, you know. There are millions of us all going, what's going on? And it's really, it's confusing. It's very confusing, you know? And so just for an hour, this is when we get together, isn't it? Because I keep thinking, are they getting bored yet? Sitting there colouring in birds and all week. Now I think, well, no, no, there's still hundreds of us get together every morning at 10 o'clock and hundreds more come along later just to have this downtime, this sort of mental yoga, this, this, this just this mindful process, this exercise. And I also think you're really starting to feel, I blogged yesterday about the benefits of practice, practice, practice. The more you do, the better you get. The better you get, the more you want to do. The whole, the Elizabeth mantra, you know. And, uh, and, I, and I was thinking, you know, I can see it in your work and I can see it in your attitude towards your work. That's even more important than the work, in my opinion. It's not because you move, you're moving out of that, I can't do it into I can do it and and when you when the mindset shifts then the world opens up for you where you've always stared at closed doors oh, I can't do that I can't do that I can't do that I can't do that. well you don't know because you haven't opened the door and when your mind shifts sort of when your mindset shifts and and you get that that kind of uh, that willingness and openness and you you dismiss that negative uh, false, false, uh, f it's not a fact, it's a false truth, if there is such a thing. It's, it's not real, it's wrong, right? You, you, you know, somebody somewhere, some, at some point said you can't do something and, and you believed that person, you know. And, and what I'm hearing and what I'm feeling and seeing now is that so many of you are like, well, actually, it's not that hard, is it? It's not rocket science, right? It's not that hard, is it? No. That's the thing. That's the thing. It is not that hard. And if, you know what I've said to you for years? If I can do it, you can do it. And you always go, yeah, but that's easy for you to say. But do you understand what I mean now? <laughs> when I say, if I can do it, you can do it, I actually really mean that, you know? And I think I could do most things if I've got time and an inclination and... And, and I, I'm prepared to practice, practice, practice. That doesn't make me big-headed at all. It's the opposite. It's like, that's my, my openness. Why, who says I can't do something? I have to prove I can't do something. Come on. You know, so, and if I can do it, you can do it. So, onwards and upwards, and we're going to do these lovely, these lovely wing feathers. All right? I, I, I'm really looking forward to this one. So, you've got your three colours. I'm going to use the lightest one first. Get a bit of copy paper. Just need a bit of scrap or something, don't you? Just to check the colour. So what we're using first is the light ultramarine. And if you've got the Perga liners, you've got a really nice one there. B5. Beautiful. That one. That lovely lilac. See, that would be lovely. But I mean, who's to say that you've got to use lilacs and purples? Not at all. You use whatever you fancy. Whatever you like. Right, so let's have a look. Let's just get the eye in. Right, get a nice flat, because we're going to do an undercoat first. Just a nice undercoat. You ready? Let me put my pencils to one side. And the other thing that I do need is my something to lean on, just so that I don't, because I can feel my hands are all clammy. Oh, what's wrong with me? Right, there you go. So what we're going to do, let's start here. And we're just going to concentrate on the, on the wings. And you know, we've said it all week, it's all about, we're going to do a light cover over the whole area that we're going to be doing today, that we're going to concentrate on today. So light circular motions over the line art 
There you go. I'll come in a bit tighter in a minute, but for now, it's okay to be far away. There you go. It's easy, isn't it? Just don't press too hard. You know, this is these polychromos and the blending pencils in the pergoliners. You know, if you press too hard, then what happens is you get like a sheen, like a shadow, like a, like a coat, coating. It seems to lock, it seals. They get really shiny. And once you've done that, it's not that easy to add more colour to it. That's the thing. So, so that's why we don't press hard. Just gently, gently, we lay colour on colour on colour and layer on layer on layer, right? And then right near the end, we can smooth all the colours into one another with our blending pens, if we've got them. If we haven't, it doesn't matter. You can, you can, you can get a smooth effect, uh, not so much as with a blending pen, but you can you can certainly smooth out with more and more layers. Just, just layers do the job. See, there's something now about about actually filling in the whole area that you're going to focus on today, because it means that you've looked at the bird, which was our thing, wasn't it this week? Attention to detail. So we've looked at the bird. And we've decided, see there's a there's a wing there. That's not a flower, that's a wing. There you go. See? There's a bit there's a bit of bird. <laughs> it's not a flower, it's a bit of bird. Right? So we're just with the flat of the pencil, which there's another bit of bird, it's not a leaf. See, so you study the bird, don't you? And you look carefully. Sometimes you have to flip the pencil to get into the real tight areas like that. Just flip the pencil so it's a bit sharper. See? Tricks and tips. There you go. That's that one. Do a little bit more on that one because these are the outer edges, aren't they? So we'll do a little bit more along there. But we're still, we're just using that light colour, the light one first. Right, so now we've done that, haven't we? Done the light colour. So we know exactly which area we're doing. Yeah? You all right? Everybody happy? Cool. Right. So what we're going to do now is go again with the same pencil over the same area again. But now when I when I get to a feather that's behind, mm -hmm, what I'll do is I'll just add a little bit of shade so I can, with this still using the light one, but you'll see what I'm getting at. This, and actually now we could probably come in a bit closer. But all the time I'm not pressing very hard. Right, hang on a minute, let me just let me come in a bit tighter. There are you go. Oh, that's very tight, isn't it? But at least you can see what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you know, I've just realised I'm getting hotter and hotter and hotter in here. And <laughs> it's because I've got like hot water bottles on my feet. You remember the clogs? You know, <laughs> look what I'm wearing, look. Sex air. <laughs> but they're like, um, they're like insulated. And I'm thinking, this is like the Joan of Arc thing. I'm getting hotter and hotter. It's like the good old days when I used to have all these personal summers. Those days are over now. But I've just realised that it's because I've got these blinking... I've got the liners from the clogs on. <laughs> oh, that's better. <sighs> that's better. <laughs> it's like wearing a pair of hot water bottles on my feet. Stupid. When I got in here, Two hours ago, it was quite fresh. That's why. Okay. Continuing onwards and upwards, right? So what I'm what I'm trying to say is, right, that when you get to, for example, we'll go through the whole feather thing again. But when I see one that's behind the other one, what I'm going to do using the light again, I'm just going to add a bit of shadow. See? So then I know. Look, that's behind that one. That's behind that one. Yeah, so I'm adding a little bit of depth already. I'm already, 
I'm going for it. So we'll add a little bit of colour. Look, watch. So you add a bit of colour. But if it's on top, you leave it just like that. So you add another generation, another layer. Then we go to the next one. Right. This is easy enough, isn't it? Circular motions. I think one of the things that you're really understanding, you know, what, I, what I'm seeing is that you, you, you understand that you have to give time time, that this takes as long as it takes. And so um, that's why your work is getting better and better. And I think, you know, in a way, see that one's behind there, isn't it? Um, in a way, it's... Um, As devastating as the pandemic has been at so many different levels, there are some positives to be taken out of it, you know. And the fact that we, we you know, we gathered together uh, just to stay safe, really, and stay sane. But out of it has come a realisation, because we had the time anyway, and, you know, we weren't allowed to go anywhere. Um, but suddenly we've had this realisation that, um, that if you if you're patient with your art and you don't just want to churn it out I think because we wanted to be we wanted to relax and, 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 and calm down so we were using the colouring and the doodling just to calm our minds for distraction and, and, then, and then we've realised well actually hang on a minute that doesn't half make a difference to my artwork. See, normally we tend to, I can't speak for everybody, I can only speak for myself, but I tend to, um, I run around a lot, I, I'm i very, I'm just, just um, sharpening my pencil a little bit. Um, I run around a lot, I don't, I don't give the, the artwork t the time that it, it needs to be that it needs full stop. Do you, do, you, do you get what I mean? I don't give it the time because I'm too busy. And so since we've been together, hanging out in the shack shack, um, we, we have done that. I have, I have said, right, come on, an hour for a flower. <laughs> you, you see what I mean? And so, and so our artwork now is getting better just because we're adding a little bit more time, a couple of tricks and a little bit more time. There you go. So it's been a really, it's been a real positive thing, this has, I think, for a lot of us. The Shack Shack, I mean. Right, so just going through each feather, each of these wing feathers, adding a bit of depth, but I'm still only using the light colour, the lightest colour. It gets, you just do layer on layer, see? So this one's behind that one. Oh, I know that Dee, when she did her original artwork, she, she spent the best part of, well, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that she spent the whole week on it, but she certainly spent a few hours on this masterpiece that we're going to give away over the weekend. Right. If you go to the blog, Barbara Gray blog, that's where all the different things that we're going to do for our open day celebration, that's where that will all kind of be centred around. I think it, everybody needs a hub, don't they? So if we use Barbara Gray blog, then I think you'll find that'll be the easiest, the easiest thing to do if you want to, if you want to kind of join in. And... But it will start tomorrow anyway, not today. So you just add in a little bit of depth. There you go. So this one now, this one's tucked in behind that one. It's what we spoke about yesterday, you know, when I was talking about the leaves and how I was studying the leaves in the, in the woods and looking at the translucency and the different shades of colour and what have you. And, and now looking at the feathers, rather than look at a mass of busyness, you think, well, hang on a minute. That one is behind that one, so let's make it a little bit darker. 
and you'll see you're making, you're creating the depth, you're creating the illusion. And that will give you a real sense of achievement when you, when you start to see the layers emerge. But we're still working with the lightest colour. Right, and then when it comes into this area, just add another layer. If all we do is this today, then we've achieved a lot. Okay? If 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 we can achieve this, and when you look at these, it always looks a lot more vibrant, doesn't it? You look at mine and you think, eh, it hasn't quite got there yet. Well, it might be a little bit lighter, um, but also what creates, what makes this vibrant is the the background. When you when you put when you put black in the back ground, look, see there, as soon as I put that in, the, the front just pinged. As opposed to that one, look at the difference. See what I mean? Look at that and look at that. Exactly the same. In fact, that one's a bit darker. But look how it jumps as soon as you add the background. I've got hiccups now. Oh, it's all go here. Hot feet, hiccups. Right. So, and then we'll go to the next layer. So we've done that layer. Let's go to this middle layer here. And we'll do the same thing again. Just add another layer of that light colour. But what we're going to do is, so you, down like so. But then when you get in here, add a little bit more depth. Not too much. Remember, you don't want to seal it, do you? So you just add a bit of colour, uh, another layer, but then in there we're going to add a bit more, just so that we can see where the depth, where the shadow is going to be, I reckon, in there. And then the top layer, again, we'll just add one more layer of that lovely light blue. What is it called again? Ultramarine, light ultramarine, isn't it? Yeah. Nice. Right, so we'll do that getting there now already and then the shadow is going to be a little bit along this this edge here isn't it just give it a little bit of depth along there so the object of the exercise today the lesson today is to learn to not get stripes not get a big stripe down there you see to blend the colors like we did with the tummy yesterday was it yesterday yeah I think so right There you go. So we've got the light colour. Cool. So now what we're going to do, so we've got the light colour. Let's look at it like this. We've done the whole thing with just one pencil. And you could, you know, I've said this before, if you carried on now, you could you could get the, sh the light and shade just with one pencil. You don't need to add different colours. But we are, we're going to, we're going to add some more colour to it. Yeah. So now let's go to the second one. We'll come back to this one, don't worry, but let's add a light colour of the ultramarine now. And this is the one that we're going to, we're going to come in, but rather than, like if this is, let's say, let's just have a little bit of theory here. If, if this is the, the bit that we're colouring in, let's say that's the bit we're colouring in, right? That's the top bit there. We're going to do the light colour all the way through, right? The light colour goes all the way through, like so. Let's just say. But then the medium colour, what we do with the medium colour, we only go to about there. So when we, when we add the medium colour or the darker colour, we, go, we only go half the way up. See, I'm, I'm just showing you, I've got a bit of a scratch on there. Look, it's like etching. So you see, so now what we've got is light, darker, but there's a line there, but I'm just explaining. And then we take the darkest one and we go half of that again. We've talked about this before. And so then the darkest one goes to there. Yeah. So you can see now, I'm not saying this is how you colour in, I'm just saying, so now we've got the Darkest one in there, like so. So you're pressing a bit harder. 
then you've got this one goes to here and then you go so that one goes through to there mm -hmm. and then the lightest one hang on goes from here all the way through let's say I mean this is a bit ropey but you get the picture and now there's a there's a blend you see how you go from light to medium to dark and basically you can go back then and you can you can of course you can go really dark in there right and as soon as you do that and then you just less pressure you'll see it straight away it lightens this area do you see how by making that dark it makes this lighter it's funny how it works but I just wanted to show you how the colors how you blend them see then you go in with the medium one over the top of the dark one so that's basically that is what we're doing here so we've done the light bit we've done this bit now and now we're looking at the medium one do you see it's easy it's easy it's just a, it's just a and I don't know I just I didn't read this in a book I figured it out but it works for me and I'm sure I'm teaching you to suck eggs I'm sure you've got better ideas but let's let's just have a go shall we so we've done the light one and now we're going for the medium one which is the ultramarine okay so this one we're only going halfway so let's start at the top here Are we cool with this right so I'm going to only go to about there so I've already done it once with a light with a with a lighter color so all I'm doing now is I'm coming over the top of the where I've already been with the with the lighter one there you go see and try not to press too hard better to do loads of layers but you'll see as soon as you do that you'll see how it starts it's going to start changing now so if we just take that colour there, everybody happy? Is my head in the way? Are we all right? Yeah, we're all right. Right, see, and I can flip the pencil. If I want to get in on that edge, watch how dark and lovely it goes. I just flip it so I'm not working with the flat of the pencil, see? There you go. See how different it looks? And then I can take the light one if I'm feeling inclined, because I've still got the flat of the light. Let's get the flat going. Just get the flat. There you go. And you can always use the flat to tone in. See? There you go. So you just tone them in and there's and it becomes seamless. That's all. It's easy. Right, and now on this one here, we just want to get in on the edge there. So I need quite a sharp pencil for this. What glasses have I? Do you know? I'm gonna I'm gonna end up being a permanent wearer of my Dame Edna's because I, that's better, now I can see. Right, so in here, right, what I'm going to do is just lightly, just get in on that, those V's there, like that. So you go in and then just fade away. In like that, so it's darker, and then just fade away. So you might want to flip the pencil so you get a bit of a, more of a, a defined nib, yeah? So just work with the pencil and just flip it round so that you get softer as you come away. See how easy it is. I mean, I'm going very slowly and I'm and I'm I'm doing this, you know, on my own. I probably wouldn't spend so much time. But you know, listen, when you've got hundreds of people following you, you can't be racing ahead, can you? There, see. So now what I'm doing is I'm coming down to about here with this colour and I can, I can, now I've got into that, into those feathers. See, I could flick it now. I can come in here and I can flick. So I get in there, into the dark area, and then I just flick out towards the light area. Yeah? Half. Half-ish. And then... We're going to go to the next one. Right, here we go again. So now we're going to go in there. Just going to flick them through. So you get into the, uh, with your chisel, and then bring it out. Just bear in mind that it's not over 
until it's finished. You know, that's another thing that we've learned, isn't it? That you, it takes, it, you know, I think we're going for the, not just the process, but also, well, it's just not over till it's over. Right, so here we go. This is easy. So I wanted to, today, which is really appropriate, actually, because Dee, she, um, you see, it was quite, not by coincidence, how, how, there's no such thing as coincidence, but here we are, and Dee did this a few weeks ago, and, and she, she used one of our stamps, a Maya Angelou quote, um, a bird does not sing because it has an answer, it sings because it has a song. And I thought, yeah, well, yesterday we talked all about, all about hummingbirds, which was all, you know, very interesting. And then I thought, you know, I want to talk about Maya Angelou, Maya Angelou, however you want to pronounce her name, Maya Angelou. Um, anybody who has followed me over the years will be familiar with that name because I, I often talk about Maya Angelou. But there may be some of you who don't know who she is. I mean, she died a few years ago now. Um, she died in 2014. Um, she, was, she was a good age when she died. But she was a phenomenal, a phenomenal woman. She was a black lady, beautiful black woman, a real uh, activist, civil rights activist. And, um, you know, she, she was my shero. She really was. And funny enough, I, I, um, I became aware of Maya Angelou when I was a student a long time ago in the 70s. And, uh, and I, I, I listened to a poetry recital by this black lady. And uh, it just it blew, it blew me away. I, from the minute I heard her voice, and she, if, you, if you've ever listened to her, it's one thing reading her work, it's another thing listening to Maya Angelou. She, she had a rhythm when she spoke. She had a really deep, sexy, beautiful voice. And, um, and when she spoke, she spoke as if she danced with her voice. She, she, it, was, it was this rhythm. It was so, so entrancing, spell catching. It just, it just took you, you know. Um, she, I think some of her famous, she, I think her most famous um, work was uh, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings. Uh, that was probably her first work, and it's what put her on the map, really. She had she had quite a disturbing upbringing, and, you know, it's not my story to tell. If you want to look it up, it will make you weep um, what people are capable of. But the thing is, you see, it defined her as a, as, a, as a woman, and, you know, she went on to be, you know, world famous, really. I mean, when I heard, when I heard her... Um, her poetry recital, she was up and coming in, in, those, in those years. But I mean, she was a black activist with Martin Luther King, she, with Malcolm X. She was already standing up to be counted back then, you know. And um, powerhouse of a woman, powerhouse of a woman, very educated. And um, I remember when we lived in California, and some of you will be familiar with this. I've talked about it before. When we lived in California. Hang on a minute. Are you comfortable with this? You're doing all right? Look, clammy hands. Look, shreddy. This is without slippers on. So what we're doing now is we're just coming in here. We're tucking in and we're just adding. We're doing that half, that half thing, the half theory, right? So we're just flicking it out. Right. Um, yeah, when we lived in California, every Sunday, even though it was a long drive from Monterey to San Francisco, I would go to the Glide Church. 
it was just, I was a bit of a seeker. You know, I'd hit that age in my life where I was trying to figure out, you know, what's it all about, Alfie? You know, I, I really, I just had my second child and, and I, I kind of, I just knew there had to be more to life than what I was, what I was seeing or what I was experiencing. And, um, and so every Sunday there was this church, it still is, in, in San Francisco on Ellis called the Glide, Glide Memorial Church. And uh, it wasn't your typical church. It was a real, uh, it was what I would call, it was, it was a real social justice kind of uh, movement. And it, it didn't matter, it didn't matter where you came from, whether you were white or black or rich or poor or, or uh, bisexual or trisexual. It didn't, nobody cared you know, you were accepted, you were who you were. And they had a, an amazing, um, they still do, they had an amazing uh, gospel choir called the Gliders. And, and they weren't all black people. You know, you think about a gospel choir, you often think of um, black people. And, but this was a, a, a gospel choir of all people. And there, there were black people, there were white people, there were disabled people, there were people in wheelchairs, there were gay people. But I tell you what, they all they could all sing. That was for sure. God, the voices and the music. And so I used to, I used to love going. Every Sunday, I'd get in the car really early and I'd make it up to the Glide Church for the eight eight thirty service. And uh, early early doors. They had two services. One was really early. And. Um, and one day I went in there and I often took Grace because she was a nipper and she used to love the music. Mark was a little bit young, but I, 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 I did take Grace and um, or I went alone. I, I went on my own. And there was a, the, 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 the reverend, was, his name was Cecil Williams, Reverend Cecil Williams, another black dude, very, very powerful speaker. Anyway, this particular Sunday, there's a point to this story. This particular Sunday, we went, we went in the Glide and it was a really packed church as well because it was such a happening place and they did a lot for the local community. You know, it was a real, they, they, they still do, they, they did a lot for uh, people who are vulnerable in their society, you know, marginalised, uh, disabled, homeless, um, people with mental issues, uh, you know, just a real happening church. The homeless people, it was a big, big, um, like they feed. It, the church is near the Tenderloin, which is a pretty sort of depressed area in San Francisco. It always has been, even when I lived there. The Tenderloin was always a, like the druggy, homeless, like uh, rough, rough area, rough end of town. And the church is in that area down on Mission, Ellis actually. Anyway, so I went in there with Gracie and it was, it was safe. It was a safe place. It wasn't a dangerous place, not at all. It was a buzzing place, banging. And there was only there was no sitting downstairs. It it was too it was packed already. By the time we got there, it was already full. So I went upstairs on the balcony because there was a, there's a really nice balcony up there as well. So I took Grace upstairs. We were upstairs, and I looked over the balcony. And in the front row, I remember I recognised her. I just recognised her because I always followed Maya Angelou. It was like um, she was my shero, right? So, so let's have a look. How are you doing? Is it? Are you getting your shading now? You're getting that area there, that this area here. See what we could do. I mean, I've I've tried to sort of single out the the feathers, but you could also you could literally just come across like that just to get that. Not too much, but just to get that level of, that's that medium depth. So you could just come along, just to smooth it out a little bit, go across the whole lot. Yeah? Is that working? Cool, it doesn't half look good, doesn't it? So then you can take the lighter one again. Let's go up to meet it, shall we? Like a bit of flat, make sure it's flat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, make sure it's flat and then just gently Circular motions like that across that across the this bit. So between the lightest area where the join is. Look. Boom. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
So there we were on the balcony, right? And um, and I looked over and I just knew. I knew from her stance. She had a, she was a real, uh, she was a tall, powerful, voluptuous, sexy black woman. And she would have been, at that point, I'd say she was going to be into her, into her late 60s, early 70s by this point. Anyway, Cecil Williams, he gets on stage and the gliders have done their, they've already done their, they've woken us all up with a, a fantastic, I mean, they have, they have a band. It is a, if you ever, ever, ever go to San Francisco, do yourself a favour and go to the Glide Memorial Church. It will change your life. It will open your eyes. And, um, yeah, so I looked down. I said to the Mayor Angelou's down there in the front row. I couldn't believe it. I was so excited. And then, and then um, um, Cecil Williams got on the stage and he, you know, he said his little banter. He said his bit because he was a great preacher. And then he, he literally, he literally, he handed over the one and a half hours. He just handed over. He said, we have a very special guest in the building. And I would like to introduce you to Maya Angelou, who was a great, uh, she was a, like a, pa a patron of the church and a real, a real active within the glide. I didn't know that, you see. That was one thing I didn't know about her. And then she got on the stage and she just, it was like a, 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 a private uh, poetry recital. It was unbelievable. She was so magnificent. Right. And um, if you, if you, you know, at the moment there's so much racial tension, let's face it, and I can't be silent. If I'm silent and I don't speak out myself, then, um, then my silence, you know, people can read into my silence. So I have to stand up and be counted and I have to say that I abhor racism. It disgusts me. I find it, I find it, 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 it rocks me to the core, you know. I, I was I was married to to a mixed race to a black guy. I, my children are black. I have to I have to stand up. And and Maya Angelou, Maya Angelou. She is probably if you want to be educated, if you want to educate yourself about um, the reality of what's been going on in America. Because you've got to remember that most of the news is written by white people. You know, you, we, we, don't, we don't get fed the real deal. Often it's, it, is, it is hidden from us, you know. And, and if you, but if you dig and you want to know the truth, you know, because my guess is that you, you are not racist and you, you but you don't, you don't know how how awful it is in America, and I think until you are a person of color, you can't. How can we know? How can we privileged white people really get it? You know, and so Maya Angelou is a is a, a an amazingly creative, beautiful woman who has written powerful, powerful prose and and books and poetry, and. One of her, and Still I Rise is one of her very famous ones, and Still I Rise. Um, does my sassiness offend you? You know, you've got, to, you've got to just try and put yourself in, 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 in her shoes. And you, when you, you then, you begin to, it begins to dawn on you. You know, especially most of us, most of us doing this colouring, we're women, aren't we? I would say that in the main, we're women. And she was a real, she was a real advocate of women, you know, black women, women of all colours. She was a, she was a freedom fighter for women. And so, and I think... I'm one of the one of the best things that I ever discovered, and I'm so glad that I discovered her early on in my life, 
was that, that I, I discovered Maya Angelou when I wasn't even 20 years old, you know. And so she kind of, she's been with me all my life. And, and I, I'll blog, I'll blog, uh, I'll find something really good to blog today, Barbara Gray um, blog. And, uh, and I encourage you to, to take a look, take the time. It's all about the time again. Take the time um, to, to open your eyes or to have your eyes open, to educate yourself a little bit. I think, I think you, you, will, you will not regret it, you know. And, and if it's ugly and it's painful, then, you know, I, I'm not a person that does ugly and painful very well. But I know that I owe it. I owe it to black people to, you know, I'm not going through it. All I'm doing is reading about it. I'm not the one. I'm not the one at the mercy of the racial discrimination and the racial terror. And, you know, I, I, I've had a taste of it, but I, all I've got to do is read about it and and make a stand, you know. Make a stand. Right, I'm using the, the, the third colour now. And and you know me. If you know me but a little, you know I, I avoid I avoid anything to do with politics. You'll never hear my opinion about the politicians or the president or the you know what? Who cares what I think? But when it comes to the fact that lynching is on the rise again then I, do you know what, I have to say, hang on a minute, you can't be hanging, you can't be in this deck, come on, you know, this doesn't, this can't happen, people. You know, and I've got, I've got two mixed race children. I've got two beautiful black kids. I can't, I can't be quiet, can I? How could I? You know? But Mayor Angelou is phenomenal. She, she, phenomenal, that's another word that she used in one of her poems. Phenomenal woman or phenomenal. Fantastic work. You know, just from a creative art point of view. But if you're looking to educate yourself, see now that what I'm saying here is um, with the third one, sorry to interrupt, but with the third dark pencil, that's the one where you go right in on the on the edge here like this, you see. And you and that's how you get the contrast. You see, because the the darkest one is coming in on the lightest one. And that's what makes the the the, the layers. That's what makes it pop. So that's really, you know. And if it makes you uncomfortable that I'm talking about lynching and about white supremacists and racism and, you know, um, well, be uncomfortable because something's got to give. Something's got to give. And, and I do know that most of the people who doodle along and colour in with me, then then you're not racists. You're not racists. But you a lot of you don't know about the, the reality of it, what's going on. And and what I want to do is is offer you that that door so that you can find out if you choose to. It's not mandatory. You don't have to. I I, I do. I feel I, I have to stand up and be counted and bend the knee. I have to. It can't go on anymore. It was going on in the 80s when I lived there. And it's still going on. And it, it appalls me. And so... I have to stand up and be counted. Otherwise, I'm... I, 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 I feel... You can't bring... You can't bring black children into the world and then not make a stand, can you, as a mum? Come on. And as a as a human being, you know, good God, how how does how is this possible? How is this possible that this is going on, eh? 
but look at how how the levels of light and dark how they weave into each other yeah there you go and and all you're going to do now is just go back and forth but you see how you build up the color it's it's really gorgeous and when you then what we're going to do is we're going to add the heads and you can look we've got more we've got another opportunity to do some work up there and and I think that when you when you just keep adding layers like this right and when you feel let me just show you when you go in now it's lovely to blend color if it were only this easy in the real world eh? just to just blend us all together so there's no difference there you go there like so and then for example when you take your your blending pen let's take a blending pen and we'll take one of our nibs just find a nib right but I'm not going to go too mad because I still want to add a bit more it's not to say that I can't but let's go in here now and then when I pull down see I start in the top and then gently I pull that colour down into the light. See, so I bring that colour down and then I've got this fantastic blend. Look, see, so you bring it in from the top and then you just pull it down and it just becomes like a seamless, look. Isn't that wonderful? And then right, so when you've got all your colour in place, see how it just tones it in beautifully. Look, and you'll see there's quite a difference between the bits that I'm using with the pen and then the parts that I'm not. There you go. See? It's amazing what a little felt nib can do to blend colour. And once I've done this blending, I can go through here just gently blending the, the feathers and then I can step back and take another look at the detail and I can go in with the lighter colour or the darker colour and I can just add more light, more shade. There you go, look. Fabulous. Doesn't it look good? See? Then you just add a little bit of shade. There you go. Love it. Yeah. Yeah, so the Glide Church, you know, very spiritual community. A little bit like us, you know. Get together, support each other. Just a different place. Different needs. Nice, huh? Powerful community. Look it up if you get a chance. Maya Angelou, I think she kind of hit the headlines in in the white world when um, she she did the poem at Clinton's, Bill Clinton's. That's how long ago uh, his um, inaugur inauguration when he became president. And um, and that one, what was that one called? The Pulse of Morning. That was a beautiful, beautiful poem as well. She's written loads, written loads. Enjoy her. She's great. We've got several of her quotes in that. People will, what's the one? People will forget how, what you said, and people will forget what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. That's one of hers. Ain't that the truth, eh? You'll forget what they said and you'll forget what they did, but you'll never forget how they made you feel. Boom. There you go. And that, my friends, is a really nice blending of colours, which is quite topical given what we've just talked about. I hope I didn't get too, too uncomfortable for you. 
But do you know what? It's got to be done. It's got to be said. It's got to be done. We can't keep going on like this. So let's have a look. Back to the job at hand. And what we're going to do, if you're comfortable with it, we're going to finish that bird. Do you fancy doing that at the weekend? No, you can't. You've got to do it now. Because <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow we'll come in. I'm going to finish the hummingbirds now. So I've done all the birds and then I've done all the flowers. And then tomorrow we'll come in and we'll look at that black background and we'll play with it and we'll get the stamen out and we'll see how we can make this jump. And Yeah? And if you have a chance between now and then, take your black pencil, the pergoliners and the polychromos have got a black, and just go around the outside. But don't, don't worry too much because tomorrow we'll redefine. Tomorrow we'll redefine and we'll go in and we'll tighten it all up. But I've got a little bit of work to do on mine. Um, yeah, but I think this will be magnificent when it's done. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I think that's what I wanted to tell you. Yes. So tomorrow we're going to celebrate our open days online. Sorry that that didn't happen. Um, everybody's been credited with their tickets. Um, and... And then tomorrow we'll start again and we'll complete our beautiful hummingbird pictures on Friday together. Uh, and we'll hang out in the shack shack for a little while again. Okay. So thank you. Thank you for joining me. And Steve, thanks for helping. Thanks for helping a lot. Um, uh, and I'll see you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. All ready to rock and roll with a black pencil. Bring a pencil sharpener. You'll need a pencil sharpener tomorrow. Lots of love. Bye bye now.